Welcome back. We are looking forward by Sashem to begin a brand new chapter. To be exact, it's a new epistle. It's the third letter of the Alter Rebbe in the uh, segment that begin as Hakadosh, which is the fourth segment of Tanya, mentioned many times that we merited to conclude the first, second, and third with the Kutei Amorim, Shaykh Hadamonim. Get us a tshuva, and we merited relatively uh, short a while ago, relatively, we're holding in the third, the uh, segment to get us a cadre, it's unique in its kind, distinct in the previous, it's not, even though we did say there, you could definitely glean the common thread, most of the, the get us is encouraging uh, the mitzvah doko as an example, but each get us, each epistle is a letter on its own, written independently of the pre- any other previous uh, or subsequent letter. There are those which the Al-Tarebbe cross-references and says, like I mentioned to you in that letter, which is, of course, that means they are connected and the subjects are definitely similar. However, the overall different times, different different backdrops um, to which the Al-Tarebbe addressed these issues in these letters that he presents. But again, a common thread, you can definitely say that it's the, uh, or the overall, the Al-Tarebbe not only encourages the Mitzvah Tzedakah, opens up a new window, or a new light, that is, of a new light of perspective of the, of the mitzvah stuff itself. Consequently, the encouragement comes thereafter, or consequent to this presentation, and these unique presentations in these very igedes, in these very letters, in these very epistles. So, much to talk about um, the... the uh, the fourth of five, we did mention also in the past in the Tanya, there was five, you get a, five the segments, we did mention its significance as well, as a Tere Shemik Salaf Tere Sachsidus. To see all the previous classes, wherever you're watching it, you can always find it, but the easiest way is to the origin, to the, at the original website, tanyaonline.com, one word, tanyaonline.com. The advantage that it's a click away to any, any, um, part of the Tanya that we learned up till now, for example, the previous uh, epistles. It's not connected. Like we said, this is new. This is where, it, where it's distinct in the previous segments there. It was, and it was, you get us a tshuva. Every page it followed the previous. There was the sequence in these ch- in uh, the chapters, so too in Shari Chodamono, and of course, the Kutei Amorim. Here, every letter is on its own, but unless to see the previous letters and all the previous uh Previous segments, for that matter, and, and sometimes it's relevant because there are, again, cross references also from the Yer Sakedush to Lukuti Amorim. In this very chapter, you have the Alter Rebbe Mulashin, like it's explained, the Makim Achar. I think even Alter Rebbe says Lukuti Amorim. Either way, the Makim Achar is definitely in the previous segments. So also the advantage that it comes up in a way that it's easy to follow, as the it's set up, the uh, website is set up that. The text is on, a, is on a separate scroll bar. And as such, again, easy to follow along. So we begin by Yibash Tzedakah Kashir Yoy. The Koyva Yeshua Bereishe, which is a Pasuk in Yeshayo, which Dr. Rebbe quotes over here. So you see over here the idea of Tzedakah. But let's, as usually we always start, uh, anything we explain, which I think in general, in general, if I may add, whenever one speaks about a Pasuk, explain in Pnimi Satayra, or even when the Gemara would explain a Pasuk in a certain way, it's always good to know what is the simple meaning of the Pasuk. What is a simple Pirish? What does it mean? And then, from there, when you establish what it is in a simple sense, it's easier to appreciate the Drush, the Say, the Tab, and so on. Or the Pnimi Satayra says, it's of course Say, Razin De Razin of Tayra, <clears throat> and to understand it and, uh, and appreciate it for that matter in, in uh more um, uh, deeper and um, clearer for that matter once we know what the simple meaning is what's the connection but it's just good you have the base this is the Pasuk this is what it means and what is the uh, and what is the inner Pirush or what is the Drash what is that Goda what is the the Raz the secret behind this Pasuk so in this case the Pasuk in Yishayo speaks about Hashem, speaks about Hashem protecting His people Am Yisrael and Hashem ve- uh, invests um, tzdoko, in, other, in this case, tzdoko, 
not in the context of charity, but in this case, Stoko is with justice. Hashem justifies that closeness to his nation. They are the Abba Yisrael. They are the chosen nation. They are Bnei B'chayi Yisrael. They are the children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the, ch- the child of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Again, we mentioned many times when we say the chosen people and the child, that closeness of Yisrael has with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't mean that we're totally negating anybody who's not part of the Am Yisrael, the Jewish nation. To the contrary, Am Yisrael has to be a goyim, a shine, a light towards the nations to inculcate the, 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 the knowledge of the oneness of Hashem Echad, the, uh, the sentiment of Hashem Echad to the entire world. So we were given this mandate as the chosen nation, as B'ni B'chai Yisrael, to be able to bring the message, the, uh, the, the cosmic message to an entire world, to every nation of the world. And they should be part of that. Again, of course, they're not part of that. The Torah of Mitzvah per se. But the message of Hashem Echad, they have Hashem Mitzvah. This is... So when we speak about Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel being a chosen nation, or that B'ni B'chir Yisrael, the closeness which there is, exists as a, 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 a biological son to a parent, and B'chir, the firstborn, which Am Yisrael are called, are, called, uh, are called as well, the firstborn, it's not only a merit and like, okay, reason for pompousness, and we are it, and so on, no, to the contrary, it's a staple of responsibility, and caution and understanding the great uh, mandate that we have as the chosen nation to bring about the message of Hashem Echad to the entire, to the entire world. So, the Pasuk, in the end of the day, this is the chosen nation, is B'ni B'chayri Yisrael, Hashem's child, and B'chayri Yisrael, the ultimate closeness, um, to a parent. So Hashem, stuck on, with justice, finds this justifiable. And with, with this stuck on, with this justice, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in, 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 uh, in garments, in order to invest himself, with the Shiryan. I don't think in the Pasuk there's a Vav, interesting, I think it's Kashiryan, but anyway, it's the same idea, Kashiryan. With the... Uh, with the uh, you know the mail coat, which has the scales, and you know it's made up the there's the chinks and the scales. It's like they open up. There's the holes, and the scales cover the holes. And what does every scale accomplish? Every covering, that God forbid, if they're in a battle, they they the arrow is shot in that direction, the scale would block the arrow because it's a metal scale. And Sashem puts on this type of Shirya because he's going to war for Am Yisrael. He's going to fight at the end of that Pasuk. He's going to take a vengeance and revenge um, for all those who bother Am Yisrael or all those who, who unjustifiably uh, made Am Yisrael comf- uncomfortable to say the least. Put Am Yisrael in, in bondage again. Different periods of our history. Generally, that uh, that uh, the oppression, tantalization of Am Yisrael, Hashem is going to fight for them. This is the meaning of the pasuk, which is of course in Yeshaya, which is generally a very positive psukim, and many of them associated with or part of the prophecy of Mashiach's coming and so on. That Hashem puts on the the kashirya, this type of male garment, which is the, which is covered with all these scales, with tzedakah, which means justifiably, because we are his children, and a hat of deliverance in his head, on his head, which is also a helmet with metal scales to protect. But again, the, the indication here, or the meaning is that Hashem is ready to fight for us, not sit passive, but get involved active to fight and take revenge for those for those nations who fought against his dear and beloved child. That's the simple meaning of the Pasuk. Comes the Chazal, the, Raja, uh, the Ch- uh, our sages of blessed memory, Baba Basra, and says, Ma Syrian Zeh, Kol Klipo Mitzterefes Le Syrian Godel, 
אף צדוקו, כל פלוטו פלוטו, מסתלף את החלק מקודם, הוא הראה בגמור, הוא אומר, אני רואה את המילה צדוקו, חז"ל תל אביב, אני רואה את המילה צדוקו, אז כל כך צדוקו, זה סימפל מינימי, שאתה השם מוצא את זה לעשות את זה, זה הוא הילד שלו, שהוא מתבטא, והוא רוצה להפסיד את זה, אבל החז"ל אקסטרקט ואומר, The word stoko, it has the simple meaning of stoko, which is charity. And what is the connection to the pasuk? Chazal say, just like this shirion, and, and, and the connection to the shirion, that just like this shirion, this type of uh, male coat, which is made with these ma- ma- the metal scales, every klipo, klipo mitzteref is the shirion kadl, every one of those scales add... to this entire garment, which means if you look at every scale on its own, it can't be necessarily that much protecting. It's always possible. If you have a little, if you have a little a part of this, this coat, and it happens to be the arrow goes there, that exact direction, so it could save, but it could save the person, but that usually doesn't do the job. Chances are slim and small. So when you put on the entire coat, that, in essence, is... The, the, the point of it, meaning to say that is the coat which will ultimately spare the person's life when he's out this, when he's out on battle fighting the enemy. So every klipa, every one of those scales meets tarefis, which means combines to this grand coat, this male coat. So the Chazal says, this is what the Prasik is telling us. That The Pasuk in Shai is telling us that you should know that every coin of Tzdoko that you give is also mitzdaref as l'chash bin gadol, is combined to a great number. Now what's so special about a great number? So first of all, we talk about a great number, there's always something that's special about a great number. Especially when you talk about money, when we talk about coins, so it depends if you have... A coin, a dollar as an example, and you have uh, 10,000 of those coins. Now, it's, in every coin, theoretically, let's say it's worth ten, a dollar, so you have $10,000. The idea of quantity is, of course, very relevant when it comes to money. But here we're talking about the mitzvah, which is accomplished through the giving, the taking these coins and giving it to tzedakah. You should know that every time you give tzedakah, just like every scale adds another protection, it is meaning, in this case of, again, One goes out to battle, every scale is another form of protection. And not only that, it establishes an entire attire, attire of protection, a vestment of protection. So to tzedaka, every time a person gives tzedaka, it's mixed that up as, it, it becomes a combination, it is combined to a great number. Okay, that's a very different pirush. But the Al-Tareb is going to explain it based on this drush in Baba Basra. That in the end of the day, that the Pasuk is trying to encourage the giving, the giving of Tzedakah. That just like, and, the, and, and thus the similarity to the Shiryan, that every one of those scales add to the Shiryan Gadol. So every time the Pasuk gets Tzedakah, it adds to the Cheshman Gadol. Pirush. Shasirian Osri Kaskasim on the Kodol. If you look at, at the... At the um, at the Syria, at this vestment, at this coat, you see, you notice that there's scales over these little chinks, which means to say the the uh, the, the openings, the privet, it's open, and then the kaskasim, the, uh, these uh, scales close the hole. So there's the hole, and the kaskasim close the hole. And the hey maginim, and these scales, shield, shalei konas chet menukavim, that an arrow should not enter into those openings, into those perforations, into those holes. And so to Maiseyat Tzedakah, Maiseyat Tzedakah becomes a protection. And the simple meaning is that when a person gives a coin to Tzedakah, that any negative energy, the simple meaning of the Gemara Rabbi Basra, that is, Rabbi Basra says, very simple, you give a coin, You're protected from any energy that is coming your, coming your, your way. Why is there negative energy coming a person's way? Unfortunately, he says every sin a person does establishes a certain uh, a negative energy. As the Gemara says, he is the, uh, the, the, 
the Yitzhar Hara, the one who persuades a person to sin. He becomes the prosecutor. He becomes the one who brings the information on high. You know, he becomes ultimately Rahman al-Islam. The Gemara continues. He becomes the one who is, God forbid, could implement a very negative and, and catastrophic um, uh, actions and Rahman al-Islam towards the person. So he does the entire job from the very beginning to the end, persuades the person to sin. Ah, sin carries a lot of negative energy. Engaging in sin is very, very negative, very gray, very negative. Generally, we know that one who learns Tanya knows it many, many folds over. The Alter Rebbe writes in the very beginning of Tanya, Lukuti Amarim, again, click away. You can see it in the chapters Vav, Zayin, Ches. The idea that in the end of the day, there is a um, there is the, uh, the engaging in something that Hashem says not to do. It's not just, it's just the idea of the rebellion, Melech Baruch Hu itself is of course very great. Hashem says, don't, and I do. Hashem says, don't do that. And Chaman I do it. Hashem says, don't speak that, and I do. Don't think that, and I do. Don't look there, and I do. Don't pay attention, put your ear to that, and I do. That's rebellion. Melech Malcham Malcham Baruch Hu. You can't think of anything more great than that. But Dal Terebe, Explains it deeper, and again, or a deep another dimension that the, the, when engaging in something Hashem says not to do, it's not that Hashem's just decided like any meaning my mo, he's stopping by that particular animal and says, Do not eat it, it becomes a non kosher piece of meat. Or if you didn't wait the six hours, or the shechita was not correct, even in a kosher animal, but it wasn't slaughtered in the proper way, and Hashem stopped there and says, No, don't eat that because that's where my finger stopped. And of course, to us, that's enough. Conceptually, that's enough of the king or the king of all kings. If any king would say, don't do that, if you don't understand, if you don't understand what's behind it, it doesn't make a difference. He said, don't, you don't. If you do, you're rebelling. You're talking about the king of all kings, Hashem, with no, uh, with no ulterior motives. He decided this is going to be the way it's meant to be. He decided this is what he wants, wants us to stay away from. It's his laces uh, to actively do, which would be the, the positive mitzvahs. That's what we do. Different meaning, but to us, that's what it should mean. He's the king, king of all kings. We violate it's a rebellion. Irrelevant what's behind the scene. But on top of that, when we know what's behind the scene, again, learning minimally, Tanya, those chapters we mentioned before, again, a click away, we realize and we can sense the gravity because a, a, a non-kosher piece of meat is right now receiving its chayis from shalos klipas atzmeis the most nadir level of, the, of impurity and I engage with it and I uh, put it in my mouth I'm right now unfortunately bringing down my whole goof my body my blood my flesh into the area of the abyss into the abyss itself because this, which I'm receiving right now, my energy, which is the food that I eat, this meal as an example, or even later on, I, it contributed to my gizunt, my one way or another physical gizunt, everything else but gizunt, because it's something which is connected to the most nadir levels of klipo and sitra achro, of tumo, literally impurity. There's no elevation for that. That's why... We can't make a bracha and say, oh, I'm hungry, I need to eat, learn my, uh, my daf, and as an example, I'm so hungry, so I'll eat something which is not kosher, I'll gain energy, and I'll be able to understand the Gemara Rashi Taitzvah, probably along the way you will see something which you wouldn't believe, how much you will see, because at the end of the day, it has even an impact in the external appreciation of our holy Torah, the holy mitzvahs, this Tim Tumah Meir, Tim Tumah Lev, even, which is something, from something which is not even stark treif, Something even when it's not even clearly in a day to say the permission to eat. It says, Not going to go into it now, but something when Hashem, so not even necessarily it'll unfold, but let's say in the service it will unfold like that, that you'll have the kayak to learn. No, it's bringing down you, it's bringing down the terror you learn because it's the core energy of impurity. There's no elevation to them. Children is a separate subject, has ability to retroactively. Even the shows should even elevate children to them, but it's a whole separate subject on the surface. No, you got to stay away from it. It's dangerous, it's poison, it's venom, and beyond. Shows keep us at as opposed to something which is in between a kosher piece of meat. Not a kosher piece of meat becomes like a uh, pair of tefillin that becomes essentially holy. It's not so, of course not. 
nonetheless has the ability to be elevated, has the ability to go the other direction as well. If someone eats it without a purpose, he's part-time, he's doing sim a similar idea than like eating an unkosher piece of meat. If it's, it's, if it's totally purposeless and it's not contributing to anything around Vedas Hashem, not so simple. Or simple it's not, meaning to say it's really not, it, it's Lashon of the al if you show, it's also the sense of Shalosh Kibbutz Atmeiz. The advantage is that if we do eat at Lashem Shamayim for the sake of heaven, and we follow through with the heavenly thought or speech or action, let's say in the same example we're giving, that I, I'm hungry and I take a kosher piece of meat and I feel better and I learn a piece of Gemara, so then that not only... I'm elevated, of course, the Teda is the holy Teda, which is elevating me, but it's also elevating that piece of meat, and the piece of meat becomes like a karba, like a sacrifice of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, even though the, the starting point was called Klipas Neigas, and something in between. Again, you could see there, it's a click away. So this which Hashem says not to do, and Rahman on a person does it, creates a sort of negative, a negative energy, also based on, you know, commensurate to the action or the speech or the thought that he connected to this which Hashem says, do not do, do not talk, do not think, do not look, and so on. So there's negative energy. That's why we be very careful. The chlal, many, many different levels, starting from the fact, how could it be that Hashem says not to do it and I'll do it? Hashem says, don't look, don't do, don't speak, and I'll do it anyways. Rebellion. When I know that what I engage with, and I engage with the most negative energy of impurity, whoa, that should shock a person. That's what's in your portfolio. You connect it to this negative energy. If you have enough of it, how could you ever, Hashem al and pay the Gitzayin, again, a click away, but sometimes we got to get rid of it before we want to establish a normal, healthy relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A perpetuous relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's just like any other relationship. If you hurt somebody, below the surface, and then I'm going to the store, I, let me buy you a bottle of water, no, don't buy me nothing. There's a whole package that has to be cleared prior to any type of uh, consistent relationship which you like to establish, or you feel that it, it should be a continuum, a continuation of that consistency of the relationship we both had, no, it doesn't work like that. There's something you went below the surface, and the time the embarrassment, part, whatever it is, you got to clear that before. And so too with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Al Tadabu writes clearly, and he gave us a tshuva, and he yudzayin lekuti amorim. So again, he gave us a tshuva, chapter six, seven, click away, and he got lekuti amorim in the first segment in Peri yudzayin. Not so simple. So we were always cautious about it. That's the point also of Hiddish Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. We, try to, we ask Hashem for His mercy to clear all this negative energy because, God forbid, Remember the Gemara tells us, based on the story with Eev, Eev was a wonderful person, but the Satan decided to come in and, shall we say, extract and extrapolate different ideas in the behavior of Eev, even though he was a straightforward person, but it is gezucht, and he brings it in front of Kodesh Baruch Hu, and unfortunately, he got his attention, and it had a big and very negative effect on Eev, as an example. And it says every Rosh Hashanah, is, this is what, why the Rosh Hashanah is a Yeh Madim, because it's the negative energy pops up to the scene and says, yeah, this is what was done on this and this date, and this is what was done there, and you know very well, it's exactly what was done what was spoken, what was thought, and so on, contrary to the Ratzon Hashem, and besides the rebellion, but the negative energy which is on the person's plate, which a person has to be very careful of, <clears throat> and in his relationship, in his her relationship with HaKadosh Baruch of course. And then on top of that, Yibas Hashem is Simcha, it's not only trying to be careful, but we, we, we understand that we are here to serve our Master. We're actively involved in all the positive mitzvahs, every mitzvah is Moshe, every mitzvah, as the connotation of tzafsa, tzafsa the chibur, tzafsa means connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So I excel in my mitzvahs, I do them behidur, and I make sure that they're done well and on time, and for particularly those mitzvahs which, which are not just a once-a-day performance, those mitzvahs which I can do constantly, for example, classically, would be limadat teira, learning teira, I'll learn more and more because every 
Mishnah that I learned, I'm connected with the core essence of Akash Baruch Hashem placed himself in Tayyar, and I want to be close, you know, I want to have that intimate relationship with Hashem, which is actually through learning Tayyar, the Lashon of the Alter Rebbe, you can see it, Perik Mem Hei, and Tanya, and other places also, Mem Vav. It's a very deep closeness. And Chas I don't want to fragment that relationship by doing something wrong, speaking something wrong, or thinking something wrong, because I'm gaining a certain negative energy. On my plate, who wants that in the relationship with themselves with Hashem. So the Pasik is telling you, based on the Gemara Baba Basra, you should know there could be based on some negative stuff in one's portfolio that it could be rushing against him like the enemy shoots an arrow. There's a foe. There's an enemy, an adversary that is, an enemy, and he's trying to throw an arrow or the negative energy can or have negative impact and the arrow could come to the direction of the person who violated it's the arrow of a of a of a uh, adversary which is the negative energy which un- unfortunately why is there negative energy there and around and why could it have an impact yeah the person were only honest we know why is that energy which was built up which we somewhat passed on to the enemy which is the it's harder the negative energy based on our not being that careful to say it moderately in areas which we needed to be more careful in all areas speech action thoughts audio vis- vi- vision and so on because we all know Tzedakah becomes a protector so let's put it in context because sometimes it doesn't mean okay I'll do all the stuff and I'll give Tzedakah and that will be a protector we'll just explain the Gemara in a moment doesn't of course work that way because you know you take an enemy and sometimes you have a good you know a good shirion and you have a good kaiva a good helmet and a good shirion but if the enemy comes a bit too forceful that not necessarily would help Rahman and I'm just saying this parenthetically we should never cast a shalom gleaned and so to say uh, gleaned anything which is not correct from this Pasik, but still we do know that Stokas Kisris Bifniapanot, it's like a shield, which would come from punishment, from negative energy, which builds up and becomes a manifest as a punishment, God forbid, which somewhat decide, you know, tickles our fancy, as we, Rahman al-Islam, somewhat wake up when there's something negative, which would come one's direction, Chas V'Shalom, Rahman al may God forsake us, I forsake every single year Hashem should only give to Ivanir of Anigla good and apparent, apparent good and, and reveal good to every single year, every single good person. And it should be a, like, like uh, the Parsha says that many times the Taita speaks even to the greatest Sadiqim, like Avraham Avinu, can give you reward because reward to a good person is a Kiddush Hashem individually and, 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 and to him to the people, his society, and to the world around. That's the reason why Abraham Avinu, for example, wasn't interested in this, this char. He, to the contrary, he wanted to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu because he loved HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As the Ramam famously says, Abraham Ahabi, he was in love with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He didn't need anything in return. Then why does Hashem speak to Abraham Avinu about schar? Because Hashem wants to establish, yes. <clears throat> Take the schar so people should know that at the end of the day that there's something I have for them on the physical plane as well, and Hashem should give every yid in abundance, Des- every yid deserves it in the end of the day. But what we're talking about, you know, this, let's call it conceptually, as well as the tshuva, and everything's going to be good, and Hashem will give us all the abundance of bracha, but conceptually, when there's negative energy coming one way, it says that tshuva helps to prevent the negative, ener- and negative energy, should have an impact. And this is what the Pasuk is saying, says the Gemara Baba Basra, Different than the simple meaning that you should know that this pasik is tzedakah kishiryon, even though again it means Hashem did this justified, so to say, because He loves Am Yisrael. So it's, you love Am Yisrael; they are your children. They are the chosen nation. So it's justifiable tzedakah that you protect them and you fight for them. But the Baba Basra is saying that this really this 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 wordage in the pasik is with precision, that you should know, just like a shirion, every one of those scales protect, you know, cover the opening, cover the perforation, and as such, the arrow can't go in. Every coin you give to tzedakah, it protects from any negative energy coming, coming towards you.
So if you have one coin, it blocks. But Rahman al if it's only one coin, as it is in the in the in the, in the metaphor, it's precarious. One one scale, two scales, three scales, no, it's an entire garment of scales. That's when there's more protection. The more stuff a give person gives, the more coins are set up, the less the energy could ultimately have um, pierced through, so to say, chas v'shalom kolir v'chas, to the person. This is the Gemara. Here the al Rebbe, which is the 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 uh, founder of Chassidus Chabad, takes it a step further, and of course, in the spirit of Chacham v'teiras Chassidus, and teiras Chassidus of Chabad. In particular, when you learn this, and if there is learning, you learn it in order, meaning to say, for that matter, of course, those who he sent it to, which was the Chassidim and people beyond, but they all were well acquainted at this juncture with Tehidus Chassidus Chabad, starting from Lukuti Amorim, which when you learn Lukuti Amorim, once you learn Lukuti Amorim, Shaykh Vemunah, for that matter, which is the second segment, you have a greater appreciation of this explanation of the Alter Rebbe on this very Pasuk. So we did. We learn the Kutiyah Mori, we learn Shech Lemunah, and we're not so uh, well, that well acquainted. We can learn it whenever we want in this class. It's a click away also. You can always see the, uh, it's not, of course, one click to have a, you know, more of a blanket appreciation of the messages of the Kutiyah Mori or Shari Chodamun as an example. But nonetheless, it's out there. You could, you could, you could look, uh, learn it. You spend the time learning it and understand it, and see this in general, particularly Chassidus Chabad, revolutionizes, metamorphoses our whole appreciation of God, godliness, Hashem's holy Torah, Hashem's mitzvahs, our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, <clears throat> the joy, and the inner joy and, and pleasure and delight of this particular relationship. Bismach Yisrael Ba'esav, Bismach Hashem Yimasav. Again, we spoke about this many times, al Rebbe didn't write another Pirush, it was, we call it many times, the perfect manual to Avedus Hashem, Ivdus Hashem, the Simcha. Everything which we find in Scripture and in entire Torah, Talmud, everything we find about Avedus Hashem, the perfect manual is the Tanya, starting from Makuti Amari. So let's go, let's start in the, uh, in, in the, uh, then let's go on a Bira Inyan, as Al Tereb again now says, I'm going to explain this to you again, with the Apichsidis, which would yes, open up a brand new light, which on the overall Chsidis did, but on this subject, and on, ultimately on this Pasuk, which is again based on different ideas that when someone learns Chsidis, learn it has even a minimal knowledge of Tanya, Shaykh and Muna, can appreciate, of course, so much more this Pedi, but let's try to explain it the maximum uh, which we can. With Hashem's help, will be explaining this idea. They let tzedakah be called mitzvahs. We know that tzedakah is greater than all the mitzvahs. Where do we see it? We see it in the Eilu Dvarim. Yes, we see that Eilu Dvarim Shailam Shir. Then it says certain ideas which are kin, which are which are the Mechel Peres Sein Beil Ma Beil Mahalba Vakeren Kemis Beil Mazel Vakeren Kemis Beil Mahalba. That it because most of the mitzvahs the reward is not in this world. Schad mitzvahs b'hay amaleke. The real reward is in the world to come. But in this world, there and but there are certain mitzvahs that the principle it remains for the world to come. But on top of that, there is special reward in this world, which tells us really it's really telling about these mitzvahs that they're greater than the regular mitzvahs, that because they're the, 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 the reward is reflected, the, the fact that there is reward, the, uh, in other words, the significance of these mitzvahs, or the greatness of these mitzvahs, the grandness of these mitzvahs, are reflective of the fact that there's so much reward, that it's not only reward in the world to come, the, principle remains in the world to come, but there's reward in this world, but it's again not only a, 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 a mass um, expansion of the quantity of energy, which, oh, there's so much, there's some enough for the world to come, the world, world, to the world, and for this world, we understand that it's a quality type of difference as well, there's a type of reward attributed and associated with the world to come, and then there's unique reward which is able to manifest even in Elam Hazen in this very physical world which again is very much telling about these mitzvahs. One of them, it's stuck extending one from the, uh, extending oneself to another party, which is again the common thread 
which we have in this very midst of tzedakah, may be giving tzedakah, starting from literally giving tzedakah. A person is in need to buy bread. It costs a few dollars to buy the loaf of bread. You give the few dollars, able to, he's able to buy the loaf of bread and eat half normal. And again, if it's bread, and if you give him more, he's able to eat a little more uh, uh, steady and, and uh, with, more, with, with a better meal and so on. And the more we give, the other person is more comfortable that enhances the mitzvah, of course, so much more. And if it's an individual, if it's many, if it's a maised, which be the, you know, the grand picture, the grand image of this unique mitzvah of tzedakah. Of course, it, it, it starts from the actual giving. For that matter, if you look at the chazal, every coin, every pruto is mitzvah of The coin itself shields the person, which means the actual giving, the quantity of giving and the uh, extension of giving and so on, but then and you see yourself in the end of Eilu Dvarim, it's expressions of kindness in different ways, because chaylin, um, as an example of visiting the, visiting the sick, which you reduce, as it says, the Gemara says, and we see it evidently, you reduce the pain of a person who's, God forbid, sick, and you come visit them, and again, there's behind the scenes also, you take away a certain part of the machla, whatever it is, this is an example, it's a type of charity, and it's all enumerated in the Seil Dvarim, and in other places, of course, as well. Stoko is greater than all the mitzvahs. Shemehen nasim levushim lahanim shama, anim shochim me'im so baruch umkum sevu kalam. Kimavur apirish malakom sevu kalam, and oh, it says, the lukuti amorim, it says, actually, lukuti amorim, ma'im shama which we have in a number of places, you have it actually, the, this terminology of the Malaklam and the Seva of Kalam is mentioned already in the third chapter of Tanya, Lukuti Amarim, toward the very beginning, even though in, with brevity, just in a word, we did explain it again, you can see it there, it, it, we took the time then in other places throughout the Lukuti Amarim, which this subject came up, even though more and more brief, because again, it was explained, explained in the initially in length. So again, you can see it in the third chapter. Also, or mainly, when the Altarebbe deals with this, so it speaks about it, this idea, the contrast of Malaklam, the Sevaklam, is the 48th chapter of the Kodi Amari. <clears throat> you could click away there, or in Shaykh of Emuna, for that matter, which is uh, with a maximum uh, elaboration, if you will. The Malaklam, the Sevaklam, we're not going to go into it now. You can really look there. It's not fair to even take much time. But generally, Mamalaklam is a contracted air, the condensed air, the light, which is condensed in order to vitalize the, the, the creations which it's creating. Meaning to say that you see a world, which is this, even this physical world, which we're able to see with our physical eyes, but we know there's so many worlds. Malchus Chom Malchus Kolilami. It's an energy which needed to create worlds, we understand it's a condensed energy, it's a contracted energy, it's not the core of a Kodesh Baruch Hashem is infinite, no finite being can be in the face of the infinite, it's really not a world, as the Gemara says, Eilam Eloshin Helam Ester, it conceals over the reality of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. that's at the mere fabric of every Eilam, but we with our physical eyes living in this world, of course could see the limitation, the finitude, which is part and part, integral part, and and the, 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 the very fabric of Elam Haz is all measured and limited. It has a certain size and a certain scope. All this doesn't exist in the face of the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And even finite cannot stand, not, cannot withstand, cannot exist in the face of the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So how would we have a world which is its only source, its only root, its only source of vitality is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If HaKadosh Baruch Hu is infinite, how could be the finite world? Answer... Hashem took part of his light and contracted it in a way that it could be a source to illness. It could give life. The Malaklam fills the worlds and every item there's the energy which creates the orange, the energy creates the apple. It's distinct because it's an energy which is already being condensed and contracted based on this which it's creating. We gave the very example which we mentioned time and again. It's pretty much of an example which, which, which allow us to understand yeah, you know, these the phenomenon of the Malcham is not a separate kind of force independent of a Baruch Hu himself. Of course not. You see by the person himself, some the person has to understand something deeply. So he intellectualizes. He sits and he he secludes himself rather in order to 
um, in, to, to be able to ponder and, and meditate or intellectualize on a certain concept. So he's formed there. He's formed himself by himself. You can't talk to him and and uh, or her. It's just a matter of, of, of a total be engulfed in one's own self. Let's say even that is not really the true core of the person because again, it's still associated with the uh, the the uh, intellectual, the cognitive faculties, which is also has a certain limitation. It was deeper than that, as we all know it. But then it is, then there's the Midas, for example, which is another step. It's where the person really engages the whole idea of a Mida. It's not maybe actual engagement yet, but uh, emoting towards something, dealing in a, 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 a feeling for something else, somebody else, as an example. Then there's thought, how to execute that emotion. Then there's speech, to say a good word. It's already more condensing my own self and trying to find the right word which is limiting, uh, one has to find the, 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 the right word, meaning to say they have to somewhat limit that emotion that the other party should appreciate it truly, what's really going on in my heart, because if I just go and I express what's really going on in my heart, the other party wouldn't know what's going on, he wouldn't even know if I'm expressing something positive for them, even though usually you say a heart's filled to heart, in other words, we try to put it in words, I care for you, or please come in, those words, come in, take some bread, wash and eat, or place of lodging, you're saying words, which those words are limiting that emotion, but nonetheless, that's the ability to give it over, to really share it with the other party, and then of course there's action, which seems to be much more trivial, but in the end of the day, in the end of the day action executes so much of our emotions, going to the pantry, taking out bread, this seems to be very simple, every waiter usually does that, but there's a lot, it's loaded, I really care for you, I'm bothered that you're hungry, take and you prepare, and it's about Rabbi being and he ran, and he he was an old man then already, and he was just coming after the bis, but he was so concerned that the people should around him, the three, which he thought it was human beings initially, to make sure that they have everything what they eat, and, and what they, what they, everything, uh, rather everything they need, and beyond that, a, a delightful meal, a meal which is going to satisfy them 100%. So he's doing a lot of stuff, but it's Avram's and Avinu's emotions coming through that. So you see over here the, the persona of the person is expressed in different ways. There's sometimes you have to contain that emotion in words and, and, and more so in action as an example. So is it the containing energy is a different personality? No, it's not. It's the same person expressing himself in different ways. So to work with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There's the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is infinite, which Eilamis on that level cannot be created. They cannot. And Hashem can do what He wants, but because you're dealing with the inf expression of the infinity of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, can't have any element in this world for sure not. It's just a, a symbol of finitude. Particularly this world, but even Gan Eden, nothing could stand in the face of the infinite. So a Kodesh Baruch Hu condenses His great light. So He gave them a marshal. We're going to have to stop over here and pick up as Hashem this coming week. He gave the marshal of the you know the generators out of the city. You can't have a generator in the in your dining room because you have to read a book and you have to put on the light. For that matter, you plug the light into the generator, the light will explode. The whole device will explode. It's too powerful. So it's out there, and then there is the wiring which comes into the city, into the municipality, and ultimately in, in, into the into the area where there's development. Development in the end, it becomes the outlet outlet to which you plug your light, you plug your lamp rather into it, and the light will. Bulb will come on, you'll be able to appreciate the book you're reading as an example. So this is a very much of a condensed version. So someone's going to say, forget about the generator. It's the outlet which is given, which is, we know it's not the outlet, it is only the generator. The only thing is, if you plug the uh, plug into the generator, it will ruin the device. Because it's too powerful. So there's the condensed version. It's the same Meaning to say, what is coming through the outlet, it is that energy coming from the generator. It's just a condensed version. It's a contracted version. And that's why your lamp is able to work. The reason why we find elements of this, or all these worlds, is all because of Seva Kalam. It's all because of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But if HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself and expresses himself, opens up the window of his infinite light, the way he is for himself by himself, nothing would be able to exist. Nothing of any anything uh, finite would ever to be able to exist even the holiest 
of the holy. But because it's finite, Ganeden, Ganeden Ha'elyin, it's a world, it's, a, it's an Olam Abriya, Olam Abriya, Tzadikim Yeshvin, Nenim, Zibish, but this doesn't exist, can't exist in front of the infinite. Great light, it can't read a book and a great, a, 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 a strong, powerful light, it has to be, it has to be covered with a little stream, a trickle of light, in order for you to be able to, okay, now I can appreciate my meal, it could be dangerous in there. Nothing could stand in the face of the infinite, even the highest and holiest levels. <clears throat> but nonetheless, associated with an oilam, which by definition is the oilam which Mahel and Mahesta, which is again the finite, any type of finiteness can never stand in the face of the infinite, like plugging a device into the generator. It's a condensed version. Which becomes, as I love learning in Shari Chalona, is the Malchus, which becomes Malchus, Malchus Kolelomim, and eventually becomes the creating force. But so this is the Memali Kolalmi, the force which enters into Eilam. Same token, there's still the generator, isn't in the example. Because Baruch Hu Chas Shalom doesn't become the Memali Kolalmi, that's not the whole Hashem. The famous expression, one of the great Makabalim, Hashem becoming a creator is the lowest. Um, uh, terminology you can give to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Wow, what a beautifully grand can, or oh, whatever it is. What a great, great creator we have in Hashem becoming the Beit HaElam. Yeah, the Beit HaElam is a term of degradation, a term of it's Mili Lashen and Zayin, Mili Dehedieta. Associated with Sarma Maris, which was Nivra HaElam, Lashen HaElam, this is the lowest terminology you can give HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be a Beit it's a memali kol almi, filling in, dealing with the almi, the core of almi. Save of kol almi is the way Hashem is for himself by himself, the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And we know, again, we're going to have to stop over here. We know mitzvahs associated with the kucha brichu, the save of kol almi. Mitzvahs connecting it to the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But beyond that, even when it comes to the reward, as he's going to explain, and explain a number of places in Kabbalah and Sivas, there has to be a Seva Kalam dynamic, which a person has to connect to in order for him to receive the reward of mitzvahs eventually, because mitzvah, the mitzvah, the energy of the mitzvah, is associated with the generator, which means HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the way Hashem is formed, so by himself, the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yes, when you do a mitzvah, you connect to the infinity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So, how could you have appreciate a reward of that nothing finite could stand in the face of the infinite therefore as Dalton explains he famously explains in Pei Chof Tess in Yerush HaKadosh we didn't learn it but wherever you have a Tanya you can learn it definitely sheds a lot of light into this ch- ch- in this chapter another the epistle 29th epistle if you get us HaKadosh which we're holding the third at this time so wherever you're learning Tanya you can find it you can see it it can contribute tremendously and so there is something which again establishes a certain from the mitzvah itself the ability of a person to be able to tap into that Eirein Sof, the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which he connected with through that mitzvah. Again, this is a premise to the, which I'll tell you, going to say, say over here, present over here, and eventually go into the uh, the next part of this explanation, which will ultimately shed the great light on this post Yes, it is the mitzvah of Tzedakah per se, based, it's all predicated on the Pirish of the Gemara Balabasa, yes, it is about the mitzvah of Tzdoko, <coughs> which has the reaction of the Shiryain and the Kaiva Yeshua, as we will see, Bezus Hashem.